it's kind of dark in my office, just a little bit. doesn't look this dark to me. But that's mainly because the iris in the camera um, is not as good as the iris of the human eye. So it's not quite as adept to finding uh, the highs and lows of video or seeing things that are overexposed. So like um, that part of the light in the wall where it looks like I have a bright daylight in the wall, it doesn't look like that to my eye because my eyes and my brains are better at determining kind of light and balance and all that goes into it. So... Let's go and talk about the iris. And the iris is this uh, next string. So we've got focus, we've got zoom. And iris is uh, an aperture that controls how much light can get into uh, the camera. And so just like the human eyes have an iris that we control light that comes in and out, the camera has the same thing, just not quite as good. So if you've ever been in a really dark place and you go out into daylight, so if you've been watching a movie, you'll notice that's like really bright outside from when you come in, from when you leave the inside. Likewise, if it's daylight and you go into um, a dark building, it's going to take your eyes a little while to adjust. With a camera, you have to tell a little bit more. So let me disappear for a second. And so this is an image that was captured in an ideal situation of two animals playing under uh, normal circumstances. So if the iris was open too, lot, too wide, then it's going to let in too much light and your image is going to get overexposed. Likewise, if the iris is too tight and not enough light is let in, then the image is going to become too dark and you're not going to be able to see what what all is going on. So this is one of the reasons why you always use your viewfinder to make sure that something looks right. So with this image, there was a person shooting a story at a sporting event and they shot this video of one of the cheerleaders and they had their iris too bright. So they were shooting something darker a moment ago and they forgot to change it. And if they had looked in their viewfinder and seen that this was a bad looking image, they would have known to make a correction. But at the time, they didn't think about it. So they just wound up recording as it is, went back to the station to edit it, and realized only then that their footage was unusable because it was overexposed. Again, because the iris was too bright. Now, one of the things that can help you out is the camera has this cool little feature called zebra bars. And zebra bars, if you can kind of see in this display, they're these little lines that you can see diagonal that are going in the really bright spots. And again, let me disappear for a second. And you can kind of see like in the walkways, there's all these little lines that look like black and white bars or zebra bars, but you don't see them in the other video. Likewise, with the rabbit, I can see the top of its head and its ears had these little bars. I don't see them in the top. And this is because with zebra bars, the zebra bars only show in your viewfinder. They're not going to show in the final product. But if your video is overexposed, you'll still see where the video and the quality just kind of washes out. But with the zebra bars, they just kind of give you an indication of if your video is getting too bright. And one of the things you can do is, I'm, when I look at the rabbit, I can see that the zebra bars are not everywhere. It's just kind of on the top a little bit. So you can take your iris and open your iris a little bit and it's going to cover more of the rabbit. Or if you close your iris um, so it gets tighter, you'll see those zebra bars just start to go away. And if you have an area that just has a little bit of the zebra bar effect, that's going to be pretty good video for you to work with. But in, can in video cameras, zebra bars are definitely a, um, a great tool and asset to have to help you out. Now, one of the things that we tell you guys is don't shoot in front of a window. The reason why is that a camera cannot differentiate between drastic changes in brightness and dark. It's called a contrast ratio that contrasts the light and dark. So the camera kind of finds a, a section in the middle and it tries to do its best to accommodate but that doesn't quite work out so if you'd gone in and you'd set the iris to open up more to see her face then it's going to overexpose everything behind her and the camera is trying to stop an overexposure from happening so it's automatically darkening everything to accommodate for that now 
if you went in and um, this is one of the reasons why we tell you guys do not shoot in front of a window. If you have a person who's standing in front of a window, just say, hey, can I get you to stand over here? Just move them a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Uh, find a different location to put them in other than the window. The other option in this case is you could also ask her, hey, can you close the blinds because the camera's having a hard time seeing. So don't shoot in front of a window. That is a major thing to always keep in mind when you are doing uh, shots in lights and darks, daylight, indoors, outdoors, is keep an eye on where your subject is. And this also applies if your subject is like under a tent. So when they're under a tent, they're in a dark area and outside the tent may be extreme bright. Again, not an ideal situation. Try to get them outside in the direct light so that your subject and all the surrounding light are going to be in the same area. And that's just kind of a look a little bit about the iris and what all it does in order to help with your camera.